All right, guys, very exciting news. Before we start today's episode, we have got a new live show on sale now in Glasgow at the Pavilion Theatre. Big we room. Will. Big room. Big room. I've seen the great sir. I've seen Aladdin Panto. Yeah. I've seen another Panto. Mm-hmm. It's been great. And now Peter Powers, he's always there. Yeah, we we'll are doing a, a, an early show for the kiddies and a late show for the perverts. <laughs> <laughs> like what he does, we're following the Powers model. But guys, listen, a big deal for us. It's on uh, Sunday, the thirty first of March, which is Easter Sunday, which will mean it will be a year to the day since our last live show at the Glee in Glasgow, which was at the Glee, uh, basically across the road. It was a lot there. of fun. Yeah. So we went from a three hundred seater to a bloody fourteen hundred seater. So a lot of get tickets, 301 guys. in there we've made an improvement absolutely yes. so uh, I like the idea of them spending their Easter with us every year like some weird <laughs> religious cult yeah guys but we would love you to spend the the Easter weekend with us it'll probably be a bank holiday I guess for a lot of you guys so yeah. if you'd like to come see us uh, some laugh live our biggest show to date we'll get we've got some guests to announce in the near future some biggies yeah. got and if, some you, big if you've seen the it. Patreon behind the scenes Edinburgh content where we're arranging a guest about half an hour before we go on we won't do that at the pavilion <laughs> no, we'll, <laughs> no we'll, we're a bit more preparation <laughs> for, for the pavilion we'll be taking it very seriously um, but we're very excited to, to do that room it's a big room so we hopefully we'll see you all there Exciting times ahead, guys. And so, tickets are on sale now in yeah. the description below. And aside from that, snap them up. Enjoy today's episode. Enjoy, guys. Thanks, guys. Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was just some, some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. Valentine Fly Guy. <laughs> oh fuck! Did you ever see Valentine Fly Guy? No. no did no, you? No, <laughs> what year were you robbed at, Fred? I, I never year? entered. Oh, you never entered. No, I did the Beneath Glasgow you? one. Did you? Aye, in 1989. What was that? Eight, no, 88. Uh, so the year that Bruce won Edinburgh, uh-huh. we did one in Glasgow. Was it 88? Aye, it was the 1988. Aye. Um, and it was the first gig I did. I did the heat and um, I didn't get placed. Fuck. <laughs> right. That your first ever gig? Aye. What was it like a new... I was just rolling. You picking me up all right? But right. maybe right. a bit closer. Good, right. play, good place to start then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My yeah. like, yeah. magnificent <laughs> failure. <laughs> 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 it was... Uh, yeah, so I went down to watch the night before. Aye. My heat. I went down and watched. Um, and I mean, Jeff Boyce was there. I don't know if you've ever seen Jeff. He now works the cruise ships. Um, various others. Stu who, mm. uh, and I was on. And Bruce was on. Martha McBriar. Um, I saw Parrot was the night before, and I did okay. And uh, I'd said to, to Aileen because it was our wedding anniversary. Right? <laughs> <laughs> our fourth wedding anniversary, and I said that look, I'm going out tonight. Um, and I can't tell you where I'm going. <laughs> so, <laughs> great element of trust. I, mean, <laughs> I don't think I could try it in my 40th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and I'll be back in a fortnight, right? But no, uh, I thought oh, I'm, I should maybe hang about just to see. <laughs> and in third place, <laughs> and in second place, <laughs> fuck, I've won it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bruce Martin, or I think he was Ian in those days. So I just scuttled off and went, and I didn't go to Edinburgh Fringe that year. Yeah, but Morty did obviously and, and won it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was right when you started. That was it. That was the very first gig. Uh, and he, did you think is was there many other places to do gigs at that time? Nowhere. Or was there, no, no. So you kind of had to do your first it, gig. Yeah, and out of that, the Funny Farm. You know, I think everybody mm-hmm. that went into the Funny Farm was, uh, a, you know. I'd tried So You Think You're Funny. Right. Um, or, or as the late Kenny Harris used to call it in Glasgow, So You Think You're Funny? Well, you fucking earn it. <laughs> <laughs> so the Funny Farm was a thing that started, and was it was it a Glasgow-based, like, just comedy show yeah. first, and then it became a tele show on STV? Yeah, oh, I, I mean, um, I mean the, the people that were really behind it were Bruce Morton, Parrot, Stu, and Bruce's girlfriend at the time, a girl called Sally. So they were the four sort of instrumental, and then, the rest of us were invited to to join in, aye, uh, and it was a case of just finding venues, renting equipment, and you know, so it was 
like community halls and places like that. Yeah. And then um, we got into the comic club, Black Blackfriars, Claire, yeah. Claire McCauley and um, Alan, what's his name? Uh, they, they started putting on stand-up down wow. there and it was magnificent. It was just Aye. transformational. Yeah, it was funny. We'd done a gig there recently in Blackfriars. Yeah, it's still a great still room. Great. It's a yeah, good long day as well, isn't it? It's really? great. Yep. Billy uh, had me down to do a gig in November, but Aye. I had to pull it, oh, unfortunately. Really? But yeah, I was looking forward to going back down. It is, uh, it's, it is a good room. It's a great room. room. It used to be, it was kind of 180 degrees round. Uh, yeah. The stage was down in the very narrow bit of it, and the oh, two really? rows of cinema seats at the front. Aye. Um, pretty chaotic. Yeah. And yeah. Craig Ferguson used to come down. Craig was in, still oh, well. in Scotland in those days. He would pop down and... Then Bing Hitler? No, he, he, he was just doing bits of stand I mean, Bing was Bing was gone. Right. Uh, I think he just came down to get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that in those days, just well, basically. <laughs> I made a terrible mistake once of trying to keep up with Craig, drinking, he said, you know, because he was pretty famous and he said, do you, do you want to stay and have a drink? He said, yeah. <laughs> Rubbing shoulders with the great here. And I got absolutely hammered and was sick in the taxi in the way <laughs> I think I got paid 30 quid and the taxi cleaning cost me 40. <laughs> <laughs> so that ended up becoming the show and you were just telling us before we started rolling that uh, you were hosting a lot of them as well as like Stu Who in the first yeah. season and then you yeah. host a lot in the second season and I've got Bill Hicks book there and That's... Bill Hicks actually done a spot on That's it and right. stuff yeah. like that. Did you meet Bill Hicks? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, I was telling Mark earlier, uh, <laughs> a guy came up to ask for a photo the other day and he said, oh, I saw you back in the early 90s. You were doing the warm-up for a, a TV show in Edinburgh. He said, it was you, Jack D, Bill Hicks. And I'm going, what? <laughs> 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 Not that you were blasé, but you yeah. just kind of... You know, the whole gang, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Steve Martin, they were all there. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, your time. <laughs> how was how was Bill? Because I've heard a couple of different stories. From Stu. <laughs> From Stu. Stu, he <laughs> <laughs> died in his ass. Yeah. Stu and then they had to record that again, <laughs> as the story goes. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Bill Hicks, we did dined out for years about getting introduced by Stu. <laughs> There's a whole chapter on Stu in the book. <laughs> God bless you, Stu. <laughs> I was uh, I was doing in the comedy store in London recently, Fred, and uh, I've I felt I always feel solace every time I'm walking down those steps. There's a picture of you yeah. on the wall for, for back in the day there, right. and it's always just a good wee hanger like that. There's another <laughs> Scottish guy here. He's done it before me before I go and fucking die in mass. <laughs> it's one of these photos where the eyes follow you down the stairs. <laughs> As you go past, I'm like, there you go. But you Good were luck. a were you a regular host back back yeah. there. Back yeah. there yeah. And did you live in London or did you just do No, you always... I, I rented uh, I rented a room in a flat. Aye. So we were married. I mean, we were married. We two two of the three kids before we. Before I got into stand up. Oh wow. So um I managed to I was just travelling up and down and then a friend of a friend had a, a room in a flat in Clerkenwell. Uh -huh. So I rented that, so I was down I would stay there. So I was, used to go down probably on a Thursday. Aye. And I would do warm up uh for Have I Got News for You on the Thursday night. Oh wow. Do a gig at the store or jonglers and then Fridays and Saturdays stand up, then home Sunday. Brilliant. Brilliant. Change some nappies. <laughs> <laughs> do do? How did you find going for like doing the funny farm and all that in Glasgow to then like doing stuff at the store and that doing London? It was a big leap. Right. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I was just thinking coming over about the number of you guys that are now doing the store in London. Mm. And I was it was really only me, you know, that that from Scotland. There yeah. was a few Scottish based people were getting gigs. Jeff Aye. Boyce that I mentioned. Jeff would do it. Sadowitz uh, kind of had a period where he came back and did the store. Mm -hmm. um, but I did it, um, and I, I, my aim was always to get to MC it, just because uh, the people that I knew that had done well in the business... Um, Can we fly here? Look at it. Nee, you this place a clean yeah. fuck's sake. Don't get us in fucking Hawaii, you know, sweetie. I mean, the camera can't see that. I probably just went like that. <laughs> he's like you were buffing him. <laughs> like, like that old Mitch McConnell. He's been <laughs> <laughs> me through. I got your aids to take you off stage. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looked like he was just pissing him. He <laughs> just like, like Ruprecht. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so Ben Elton had been an MC and Clive Anderson had been an MC and I thought, well, if I can get to that stage, yeah, uh, it's a kind of mark, you know, it's part of what... Because I had a lot of ambitions and that was one of them. Yeah. Was to MC the comedy store in London. So Amazing. it took took maybe about two or three years to get there. Yeah. And then I did it for a good good long while. Absolutely. What was it like playing it back then? Was that like because it's like, it's obviously such a historic place and it's got such a a myth mythos yeah. behind it. I suppose. Yeah. What was it like back then? It was uh, well, it, it was a different location. Oh, right. Uh, right. It was in Leicester Square, right beside the the big Odeon. Aye. Beside that, and it was down in a basement, and uh -huh. it was an odd shaped room. It was kind of long out to the right, and then there was a balcony in front of you, Aye. and some people around the left, and there was a brilliant back room that yeah. had booths where you could hang out, and people, would, you know, it was the hangout place Aye. Uh, for comics to come down to, and it was great. I mean, uh, and you just you know, talking about people that have done telly things. The you know the the acts that were doing it at that time. Sean Hughes was a big regular. Joe Brand was a, a headliner. Eddie Izzard mm -hmm. as well. Um, but Lee Evans was Lee was the one that would always just absolutely blow the roof off the place. Is that right? I wouldn't yeah. like to follow Lee Evans. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> didn't you watch Ten Open Spot? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking I mean, Saturday Late Show. Jesus <laughs> it's just incredible to watch. You know, well, uh, I've, I've heard like I don't know if this is. Uh, for a lot of people, but I've heard someone like if Jack Day would have to follow Lee Evans, he would say something, something like you know, no, he'd stole my act or something. And he's dead, <laughs> he's dead, dead pan about it. Yeah, that's yeah, the only way yeah. to follow a high energy act is just to <laughs> undercut it. To go the opposite way. Yeah, aye, because yeah, you know, you know, in the comedy store, you're you're in and you you pass each other, and, and you always just have a word or two, you know, and yeah. you blew the roof off the place. And Jack was coming and he'd just go, nice try. <laughs> 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 uh, the other one, Coogan as well. Steve oh, Coogan wow. was still doing the circuit in those oh, was days. was he really? Uh, yeah. Doing yeah. characters? Yeah. yeah, impressions. Just, you know, and the impressions were Terry Wogan and, yeah. uh, uh, well, Wogan was the big one. He was brilliant at it. Mm. It's, it's so good. That's amazing. Aye, because mm. that's the tea. he done like a... Was it him and Frank Skinner or something done like a double act or something? Oh, it was like I a two, think a two hander or something. Book, he did. Coogan. Yeah, he when Frank Skinner was brand new, I think he booked the Fringe and he had Coogan open for him. But did he? Frank Skinner hadn't right. really done yeah, stand up, yeah, yeah. and right. Steve was just like destroying every night. Uh -huh. yeah. And then Frank would have to come on and follow him. Yeah. Because Frank Frank had almost moved off the circuit when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. right. He was he had, there was a club in Birmingham. He lived up still lived up in Birmingham, and he used to do that the Bear or something like that. Um, and he would, and, and Frank was well known as being a brilliant compere, and we rarely worked together, you know. But there was some people that I worked with a lot, just by coincidence, just depended how it was booked. Aye. And in those days, you would you'd get a weekend a month at the store, you know. Mm. Now I guess people are lucky if they get maybe three bookings a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, yeah, definitely. <coughs> yeah, <it's laughs> And you were saying obviously about opening for uh, our warm up for Have I Got News for You? Yeah. And you've done a lot of like, news quiz and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, how did you end up getting into you know, doing all that kind of stuff? Well, the warm ups were uh, just because people had seen me you know, and thought just my my style of humour would be fine for, for doing warm ups. And Tony Hawks, do you know Tony? Tony does quite a lot of Radio 4 stuff. Not the skater, no, no, not, 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 not the cross skater. <laughs> the young guy in a combo Fred moves. Tony Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> is that, Fred's a character in Pro Skater too. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm sure that's funny. Uh, so yeah, Tony had done it and uh, I think he'd got fed up doing it. And the producer was a guy called Harry Thompson uh, and he called me up and just said, look, would you come and come and do one and we'll see how it goes. Aye. Uh, and I ended up doing four series. And out of that, I did, then did Rory Bremner for, God, about five series, Paul Merton's sketch show, that kind of stuff. And it was a it was a good gig because it, it was pretty well paid. Aye. You know, there was guys doing warm-up down in London that were doing the big studio things, the sort of mainstream uh, that were, you know, making a mint, you know, and they were working six nights a week doing... Aye different studio warm-ups but uh I, I again it was quite i was quite uh disciplined about it i thought well i'll do it for a while and then i'll stop because you end up just hearing you know you, you get a phone call from a producer like the late jeffrey perkins would phone up and go fred we've got a new sitcom 
and you'd be the man <laughs> to, <laughs> to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stopped doing that uh, for a in fact, I just stopped doing it. Didn't, no. Never really went back to it. Mm. Did you ever do much acting? Me? No. 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 Because I can't even remember lines. <laughs> really? Seriously. Well, you've done a, a few wee skits in the thing with McCoy, McCoy and McCoy. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Done some skits and stuff. They were, they were great fun. And, yeah. I, and again, they, they weren't really scripted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just kind of, you were just busking it. <laughs> I remember there was a guy uh, that a, a critique of our show and said, uh, the highlight of his week was watching Fred McCauley and Ali McCoy trying to read the autocue. <laughs> <laughs> autocue? There wasn't even a script for an autocue. So, so that show, McCoy and McCauley, and so what, what year would that have been on? Or what kind of that was time? 97. 97? Yeah. And how, how did that end up coming about that you just got done that show together? Well, that was... Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you, there, there was a wee bit missing between doing the stand-up and then getting the Radio 4 stuff. Uh -huh. News quiz and Just a Minute, that kind of stuff came along mid-90s. And my first of I Got News for You was 95. Wow. And then, uh, so I was getting, you know, and my friend shows were, were going well. We're doing well, yeah. So... Uh, in 90, when would it have been? I think it was early 97. Um, Brendan Burns and I were the co hosts of the pilot series for the 11 o'clock show. Aye, right. Uh -huh. And we did, we did, I, I can't remember how many we did, probably eight or ten or something like that over a fortnight. Because mm. um, it was a daily show. Right. And we did that early in the year. And then in May, 97 I got offered the Radio Scotland job so I'd been on the circuit for a long time kids were growing up Ian my youngest was six or seven at the time he hated me going out on the road mm. so got offered the radio show and I thought I'll, I'll just that'll be fine it means I'll kind of come off the circuit but it was you know it was decent money and I thought oh well maybe just do that Aye. and then I got offered the 11 o'clock show first series which was 20 weeks. Wow. Oh, right. And wow. Uh, I, I turned it down. So you would have had to be <clears> down in London? I had to be in London for 20 weeks. Right. And I, was, I can't do it. Mm. So, and that was a that was a massive decision. I agonised over that because it was, it was a pretty big break. Yeah. Um, agonised over it. And then um, BBC Scotland had had a chat show with Nicky Campbell. Uh -huh. And I think it lasted maybe two or three series. And Nicky then didn't want to do it again. So they said, look, we still want to have a chat show. And so they had one of these sort of brainstorming sessions. I'm led to believe. And a uh, young researcher, Esme Frain, uh, Esme suggested that uh, we do a thing that STV had done something similar. And they had Jim White and Kirsty Young co-hosting. Yeah. And she mm -hmm. said, we could co-host. So they said, come up with the names. And she said, well, Fred... And Ali McCoyst. So they said, hey, good on you, right? Give it a go. Aye. And Did they, you know McCoyst before I'd this? met him a couple of times. Right. Yeah. Was he not still playing football at this point? He was, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Because you know like jump ahead McGinn, a bit when he, done, when he went to France in 98, because he just never got picked, but he was still That's playing. Right, yeah. Is he just he left Rangers or something like that? He was. He'd gone to Kilmarnock. Aye. Mm. And Craig Brown, who just died this year, I... I did the voiceover for a documentary last year called Mr. Brown's Boys. Well, I watched, yeah. right. watched that. It was actually. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was brilliant. an incredible amount of footage. And to publicise it, I got Craig on my radio show. And I said, Craig, you know, in some respects, I owe an awful lot of my career to you. Because <laughs> we got, I, you know, I was able to do all these series with Ali because you didn't pick him. <laughs> and he said, the biggest regret in my professional life, he said, I can't tell you how many times I've apologised to Alistair. Is that right? Is that how much Craig mm -hmm. hated that show? Was <laughs> 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 up, actually? You just, just switch off. <laughs> it's, an, it's an insult to my intelligence that I'm forced to watch this. <laughs> but, he said, but he said, yeah, he said, uh, and he said, even just I've had him in the dress, no, he misunderstood. He underestimated just the, you know, what Ali's effect could be in the, the other guys. Aye. So uh, anyway, uh, back to '97, and they they immediately gave Esme. Uh, they said, right, you produce it, and gave her a budget to do a pilot, and we did a pilot in the Tron, and it was uh, Ali and I, obviously. Uh, Kay Adams was a I guest. think my dad said he went in that actually. Did he? The pilot at the oh, Tron. Wow. I, he was telling me about Stu that. Stu and Tam. 
her As guest. Right, and an actress, Barbara Rafferty, who was in um, River City. R- River City and uh, Rabsey Nesbitt as well. Yeah, she was James's right. wife. Wow. And they loved it and they they plowed money into it. And we, we were commissioned within the same financial year, which was really uh, unusual to happen. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, so when you've done the, the, the series, it was like, was it kind of going around the country and doing yeah. different kind of, because yeah. I've seen there's one in Perth, obviously. That's right. that we started in Ellen, uh, up in Aberdeenshire, and that was that was mega. Um, and I can still remember who the guests were. Julie Graham, a Scottish actress. Uh-huh. Um, she was uh, in a number of series uh, back in the day and was famous for having a, a photo of her naked but wrapped up in cling film. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody was time. way ahead of their time right? <laughs> uh, we had Mark Owen who right. had just recently left take that mm. and Frank Kelly who's Father Jack oh right what a crazy, crazy show this is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but wait, but, wait. but the star guest was George Best wow oh, right Wow. And he wasn't still playing at this point. He yeah. wasn't still playing, no. And George and his missus were flown up to Aberdeen, put up in the hotel, and uh, the driver was told to wait in reception to to pick them up, and get them out to the studio. Uh, and uh, he's looking at his watch and he's saying, "It's <laughs> getting a bit close." He says, he "Went over to the reception. He said, uh, could you maybe give Mister and Missus Best a call and tell them we need to get get going?'" And they, they said, oh, "So they went out the back door about." 40 minutes ago <laughs> and they just went out in the lash <laughs> right? you know. and McCoy was gutted because yeah. you know he'd, he'd never met the man Yeah, I, I idolised him right Aye. and he didn't show up so he's usually known for his professionalism as well <laughs> <laughs> <It's the same laughs> <with that. laughs> a huge surprise to everybody <laughs> <laughs> not that George <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Were you just going to ask him where did it all go wrong, Jules? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it was uh, it was funny because uh, the week before, Clive Anderson had been interviewing the Bee Gees. Oh, so I've seen that. And they YouTube, walked yeah. off. Yeah. Right? And I closed the show by saying, well, in the week that the, uh, the Bee Gees walked off a chat show... Uh, we've made history by having a guest not walking on. And I remember, because I had a broken leg. I, I broke right. my leg on holiday in October 97 and came back and we did the first few shows. I still had my, my cast the, on my leg. And you think it'd be Ali that'd be injured if he was doing a tele show? <laughs> <laughs> That's what ruled Fred out of the 98 World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Jake <laughs> Brown, biggest regret of my career was not picking Fred McCall. No, was picking Fred <laughs> This drunk woman came up to me again uh, a couple of weeks ago and she said, my dad hates you. I said, <laughs> which isn't unusual, right? <laughs> said, she said, what, why does he hate me? She said, because he's a Newcastle United fan and you played for Sunderland. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think I am? He says, You're Ali McCoy. And I'm, I've been on stage for 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not paying attention to anything. Wow, that's amazing. That's great. It's bizarre. <laughs> We were uh, we we had shared on our Twitter. Um, no, the, at the time of recording, we're, we're a, just after the, the Spain game. The oh, by the time this goes that? out, Scotland potentially could have qualified by now. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a. So Scotland have qualified. We'll need, record, <laughs> we'll need to record two yeah. versions of this. No, you so don't. Scotland, <laughs> <laughs> so Scotland have still no qualified, but we're not likely to qualify for the for the Euros, Fred. Yeah. But you is like because we is that picture of you. And Ewan McGregor and McCoy, yeah, and because yeah. because I've seen the photos before, like Sean Connery and all that as well. Yeah. And, like you're in it, and you and McGregor. And we all don't that. believe in like mood boards and stuff like that. But if we did, that's that we'd have a big <laughs> one of them on the wall. Yeah. We are like, we are putting all our energies into <laughs> <laughs> is trying it to manifest. And we're trying to manifest yeah. that for us next year because oh yeah, that would like well, not only some trip and because he's done the the, uh-huh. the show for France uh-huh. thing, but that would look like some fucking night. It was like everybody, yeah, was, every uh, Scottish <laughs> famous person <laughs> ever was there by the looks so of it. We we did the recording on the Monday night uh, the game was on Wednesday Aye. so on Tuesday we got up and uh, we did, we did, Monday was the night that we went out with Ulrika and uh, <laughs> the, the, the Stan Collymore <laughs> incident right oh what's that you, you need to refresh that? us on that one oh god Stan Collymore and Ulrika had uh, come over to Paris 
Um, We've got them on together next week, so try not to play them. We'll get the keep, keep, keep them apart. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ulrika was right. She was having a, a great time, um, and we all went down to the Old Alliance, and she said to Stan that she was he didn't want us, her coming down with the boys, and she said, I'm going anyway. So we jumped into a couple of taxis, and we went down, and uh, we're... At one point, uh, I don't know how many of us, but I was certainly, the Ulrika was, uh, standing on the bar, downing pints in one. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, it was like being a rock star. It was the closest I ever got to kind of adulation uh, <laughs> because I was near Ulrika. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, thought you were Ali McCoy. <laughs> 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 I mean, I was standing in the bar saying, I used to play for Sunderland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I did it in a Geordie voice. Anyway, uh, and then I think she'd gone backstage and Stan had found her. And there was a, a bit of a kerfuffle, I believe. I didn't witness it, so I can't say one way or another. But then uh, he got horsed out of the place and we jumped into a taxi and went back up into town. And we found this little pub near the uh, sort of cafe bistro place near our hotel and there was Koisty, myself, Ewan, Ewan's brother, his wife, Ewan's wife, Ev, and his mum and dad, Hi. Uh, my agent Melanie and I think there was 10 of us uh, as well, Ulrika obviously was there and uh, about three in the morning, Collie Moore found us again when he came in. And Ewan's dad was a PE teacher and he was, he was a fit guy. Jim was fit, but he was about five foot six and Colin Moore was greeting. He said, I want to see Ulrika. And, and, <laughs> and Jim just standing there, poking him in the chest, going, any trouble at you and you've got us to deal with. Right? And I'm going, us? <laughs> <laughs> Who's us? That is funny, isn't it? But it was, uh, so that was the Monday night Tuesday we got up and uh, Ali and I, we were staying in the Intercontinental Hotel. Uh -huh. It was beautiful. And see the show, by the way, sorry, Ben, but see the show, was it, did you just film it like next to the Eiffel Tower? It or was something? in the Eiffel Tower. It's in the, the Eiffel Tower. Floor. Because we watched it on wow. YouTube and it's like, it was <laughs> really good. Um, I mean, wow. I, I've done was so that many. one of your ambitions you had earlier on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was aiming for the second floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, we, we did the recording. The next day, Ali and I went out for, went for lunch uh, in the street cafe with a couple of pals. And uh, Richard Wilson, the actor, he joined us. Wow. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Eh? I do believe it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we sat there and got absolutely wrecked. And we, we were meant to do, uh, we were meant to go down. Jackie Bird was doing a uh, report in Scotland live from the banks of the Seine. Aye. And we were guests to promote the show that was going to be on at nine o'clock. And at about five o'clock, we said, oh, we better get down there. And we've been drinking all, <laughs> all afternoon. And there's a guy who worked for the BBC called Charles Marks. And by pure coincidence, Charles spotted us trying to hail a taxi and realised we were hammered and <laughs> thought, this is not good for the image. Uh, so he said, what are you doing, boys? He said, we're going down to see Jackie Bird for report in Scotland. <laughs> Just, you know, stay where you are. <laughs> and he phoned up and said that we were stuck in traffic or something like that. <laughs> so they excused us from going on live TV. It would have been a disaster. <laughs> oh, really, it would not have been good. And then, so then we went from there to the Buddha Bar, which was where the big uh, pre-match get-together was that everybody was at. Aye. Alex Ferguson... Sean Connery, as you mentioned. Uh, is this, in the picture, it's like Salmon and Sean that's Connery. Right. and you that's and like the Sgt. Pepper's cover of <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was, I mean, there were hundreds of people. I don't know how many were in. And uh, they'd booked um, Alistair McGowan to do some mm. entertainment. And it was just a rammy. Mm. Must have been a tough gig that night, yeah. yeah, yeah was was <laughs> I, Ali and I took to the stage, right, and <laughs> got all this acclamation. And, and then it came off, and Alistair was was not having a good night. And it stunned, and everybody's talking like that. And Sean Connery jumped on up on the stage. Wow! <laughs> and he and he just and everybody kind of calmed down a wee bit, and he just leaned into the microphone. And he went, "Wished." <laughs> 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 oh, fuck that. <laughs> uh, 
it is brilliant. And, and then, the, then the singing started, and, and McCoy's a singer. Uh, he was uh, we, well. I've got a, I've got a great photo of uh, us singing on stage. There's Ewan, his dad, his brother Ali, and I. But that we were just singing "Flower of Scotland" or something like that. But Ali then went on to do some Bruce Springsteen numbers as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's. I think he said he had Kenny Kenny Dalglish got up and was singing, doing backing vocals. <laughs> That's crazy, man. It, it was. Just, uh, and I've said this before and Aileen's pulled me up a bit yeah. I said it's the best week of my life <laughs> <laughs> you hear that kids <laughs> so we because we, we are we are hoping to maybe go and, and, like, and, and, and yeah. try and do some podcast now earlier and all that yeah. and like, well, and 30 just, years just, later you can go and speak to some three three young Scottish <laughs> <laughs> hey, were you really there <laughs> <laughs> is it right Steve Buchanan was it <laughs> <laughs> but have you get any tips for, for surviving the tournament or just just go and get steaming basically absolutely yeah 100 <laughs> get a tart and shoot and go for a big time just uh, go for it because part of the reason i think i'm so excited about it is because other than that euros that like, was delayed through covid and then two of the games at hand and then that just that one at wembley uh, anyway this is the first time it. since 98 mm. that you can go away and watch scotland in a tournament potentially hang in touch with but <laughs> yeah. uh, boys oh boys oh <laughs> <laughs> i would get there man it's something but it's like so for, we are just like let's fucking go and date and yeah. you know because yeah. it might never happen again or whatever so yeah. Yeah. I'm prepared for my Edinburgh friend show to suck next year <laughs> aye yeah, fuck that what progress that. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you should definitely go uh, see you, you mentioned uh, Alex Ferguson a minute ago aye. right so a couple of years ago now I think I was just watching match of the day it was after Ferguson retired I think <laughs> watching match of the day and they go it's my new game goes to Ferguson in the crowd who's he sitting next to <laughs> Fred McCollum <laughs> oh that's fucking Fred it's like gig women with fucking come on at last week <laughs> so I put up for auction the chance to come and sit beside me <laughs> <laughs> he stumped up seven grand <laughs> yeah. so is that like do you quite pally with Fergie then or like how did that come a bit like. it, well, um, the so he, he's written a couple of books, uh, and the first book he wrote was post ninety eight. I think it was probably about two thousand. Aye, and he was doing a book launch at Hamden, and they booked me to to host it. Aye. right, and it was dead funny because I was like, oh shit, he was there that night, and so Aye. when he came in, we got introduced, and I said, I, I think I passed cross uh, last year. Uh, Oh, he said, was that the Buddha bar? He said, I'm sorry, I was pissed out my head that night. <laughs> <laughs> so I did the book book thing with him. And then over the years, uh, at various events that he's he's had, he's, he's had me along to host them. Oh, brilliant. So I, I'd done a few of them. And, you know, you would just do them for Sir Alex because he's such a great man. And his son, Jason, looks after all the, the side of the business. And I said, look, Jason, mm. I, I wouldn't want a fear or anything like this, but... Is there any chance I could come to a game sometime? No, oh, I no bother. We'll sort that out. Uh -huh. And he said, "I'll send you a list of the games." And he, and he very kindly said, "It won't be Arsenal or Liverpool, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking through. Oh, we'll Bournemouth, <laughs> <laughs> Watford. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's this lady, Sharon Thorne, and Sharon's a big Man United fan, and she'd taken me uh, to various Old Trafford games uh, and. Both my boys had been as her guest as well. So Jason got in touch. He said, right, February, I think it was. He said, uh, Dad will be happy to host you. So I phoned Sharon up. I said, Sharon, I'm going to take you to Old Trafford. All right. She says, where are we sitting? I said, well, I don't know exactly. And she said, what does it say in the tickets? I said, I've not got tickets. She said, <laughs> And she's a high-powered CA with Deloitte's or something like that. And she's thinking, this is a bit weird. So I said, look, I'll meet in the Saturday at lunchtime, Manchester. And she's got a, a driver and a limo kind of thing. So he takes us out. She's still kind of sceptical. <laughs> you just go to the front door and there's a lady called Cathy there. Not Sir Alex's late wife, Cathy, but another Cathy. And I said, oh, my name's Fred. Oh, yes, come on up. And we go up the stairs and it's going, VIPs this way. <laughs> and Sharon's going, <laughs> and we take a right <laughs> going, I don't know what's going on here and there's just this wee door and she knocks on the door and she says Alex that's your last two guests and we go in and there's five other guests and Sharon and me and Sir Alex wow. and his wee he's got a wee room special wee room uh, all of his own in Old Trafford with a bar 
Oh, and, well. uh, it's right. the least they could do, really. <laughs> He's done quite a lot for them. <laughs> <I think. laughs> so he uh, we had a few drinks beforehand. Then you have the meal, and then out we went into the into the uh, the director's box. Amazing, it's just incredible. Nice. That's see crazy. when you're see when you're sitting next to him at a game and see you going like oh they should have fucking passed it wide there and all that sort of stuff is he like <laughs> right. he, half the time he's, he, half the time he's like that he's on his oh my horse is one <laughs> <laughs> seriously oh that was a good bet that was a good bet <laughs> and uh, I can't remember who somebody was coming off um, no it was I think Mata was warming up or something like that and Sharon said oh he's warming up who do you think he'll take off and he said, uh, I'll probably not be fucking Pogba. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I told Josie he was shite. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> sorry, Sir Alex. If you ever seen that, I'm sorry. I'm telling tales out his school. He watches Paul Pogba <laughs> fucking cheers us. He says, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, and, and they're just... <laughs> If I speak, big trouble. Yeah, I should, I should say, but uh, he, I mean, Sir Alex is a deity, and, and then yeah. you go out, and, and they're all standing round the director's box, wanting, and they, you'll, you know, he'll do, he'll lean in for a selfie or something like that. But there was somebody there from abroad who obviously didn't know the protocols with uh, our names, right? Because right. uh, some are going Sir Alex, right? And this mm. guy's just shouting Ferguson, <laughs> <laughs> Ferguson, <laughs> Ferguson. <laughs> Chance. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe a lot of people maybe have uh, more of that. Uh, probably the first time I seen you, I would say, um, was on Mock the Week and uh -huh. your, your famous bit the on famous that. Famous bit, mm. yeah. The fucking boo. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, do you know the bit? I think it's always <laughs> an underrated. It was just and no one said it was a. I was punching, but it's like the setup to that bit. Uh -huh. See when you say about <laughs> St Johnston's ground, it was like oh, it holds like four thousand or something. What the, they've, they've, been, they've told. been told. <laughs> that's <laughs> like that. that's yeah. a great line. Thank you. <laughs> you know that. You know the end of that story though. No. You ever, I, sometimes when I'm doing a live gig, I'll, I'll explain. That was like half the story because right. um and, and for those that don't know it's just about a guy that gets excited and he's shout, it's about the overuse of the f word right Aye. fucking boo <laughs> <laughs> and a steward bollocked him right because it's a family stand if that happens again you're out and he goes i'm sorry i'm just got, i got carried away it'll not happen again and ian was about eight at the time he's going daddy the, the man got a row i said i, I know he said, he said a bad word i know i heard it he says he's not going to say it again. I said, Dad, good. He said, do you think he will? And I'm going, there's every chance. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a few minutes later. And again, like a lot of stand-up, or, or a lot of things we talk about, it, it is, it's based on truth. And the guy mm. did, I swear to God, <laughs> about five minutes later, stood up and shouted, fuck it, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and he turned around and he went, stop myself in the nick of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> he didn't get a bollocking for the boo bit. <laughs> but I mean, mock the week was uh, that was one of the toughest TV gigs I've ever done. That's really? what everybody yeah. says, and particularly that time because was that yeah. that's when Frankie was still Frankie, on it and stuff, eh? Yeah, and Russell Howard. Aye. So I mean, the the other, the four of the other four people were just we were patsies. <laughs> Frankie, as you know, incredibly hard worker, brilliant writer, and all the rest of it, but. You know, you would get some time to come in, but uh, because and he came over to me after he said, uh, "Well done" or something like that. I said, "Jesus, that was." He said, "I know it's a fucking bear pit," right? wow. <laughs> and it was. I mean, it was just I, well, I just it, because I, it's people trying to jump in with yeah. their, their joke before yeah. you, basically. Because yeah. I've never really experienced. Because I've really only done like what breaking the news or something as a panel showing like what. Des is the host who and he'll, he'll go into everybody, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I, that's that's what everybody's always said about Mock the Week and stuff. And I couldn't imagine. And is it just people just chipping in, just try to get their yeah. stuff and like just jumping over your lines and yeah. things like that? It mm. was. It was just like that. Aye. Yeah. Not. A, I had three or four of them, and the, it was never a really pleasant experience. Whereas I've got news for you was, mm. I only did two QI, and they were they were joyous. You know, it's just Aye. QI. You get no uh, no information about what's coming. Right. You just go and sit down. And off they run. Mm. So it's on a kind of anecdotes, you know. But does that not kind of put the fear into you because you're like, well, at least with the other ones, I've got jokes to fall back on. Yeah. But this is just I need not to really. say the first thing. No, no. I, think, I mean, it's like you guys sitting talking here. You know, you 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 wouldn't get stuck for anything to say. You just spark off each other. Yeah. I know, but like in front of a live audience is a bit different, isn't it? 
Perhaps better. Yeah, Stephen Fry's no sitting looking at us. A bit more pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Davies over in the corner. <laughs> there was a, a, a radio show um, that we did years ago, and <laughs> we, we did a run through, and uh, I can't remember what the gag was, but we'd to sit, and it was just like the four people that were taking part, and the producer, Bill Dare, and uh, I did a line, and the comics laughed, and Bill went, and and that's funny how. <laughs> just, well, uh, only in respect of that, when I say it out loud, people laugh. <laughs> so that, I don't know how better to explain it. Right? It's like a good comeback. Well. It's not exactly setting an easy tone. On <laughs> I know. Yeah. So when it comes to the recording, you think, I've got this really dodgy line here that the producer doesn't, doesn't think is funny. Absolutely. I know. But the hell. Did you end up doing it in the recording? Probably did I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been edited out because it was shit. <laughs> How do you think, like, see, doing like obviously hosting the radio show and like so much broadcast stuff? How does that feed into the stand up? And does like does it make you a better stand up doing a lot of like bro- like going doing a radio show all the time? And or does doing the stand up help with being like, a host and a broadcaster and stuff? I don't like know. That? I, I think one probably feeds off the other. Aye. I mean, the the thing about doing the radio was that. Uh, and it was just a speech radio. There was no music, an hour and a half or whatever length of time it was. But the the worst thing that can happen is dead air, yeah. right? So you're mm-hmm. always filling, you know. That, so if anything, it just kind of makes you speak a lot, yeah. right? Mm. Uh, and stand up, I mean, I guess... <laughs> That's the producer. Oh, the <laughs> well, let it go. <laughs> I'm not still talking about it 32 years later. <laughs> yeah, <You> wank. <laughs> Very much, and that was Fred's uh, watch that just went on there. <laughs> I say thing today about uh, a bit because um, you know when we did the uh, the stand kind of stuff during lockdown. Mm. Hi. And the, the first time, and I don't know if you get feedback on your podcast or so, or if you do, do you read them? <laughs> that that's that the first stand one that I did that Nelson hosted. Uh, Some of the comments, the are comments, bro. Jesus, I've never seen it. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you're not everybody's cup of tea, but Jesus Christ, yeah, that was that was. Especially for that though, I think there's a sort of mob mentality and people are just yeah, putting yeah. in stuff for the sake of it. And, and it's a tough game. And when it was live, stand. well, that's it. And people only used to like, I don't think people really understand that like a whole part of it, like, particularly I guess if you're, if, if you're filming stand up, is that the laughs are what make people think it is funny like oh, get yeah. you know, yeah. and it's like see when you're just when we are having to do it to uh, that empty room it's going to just look shite yeah, and then yeah. people are just and they've got nothing better to do than sitting on <laughs> yeah, his yeah, and go yeah, exactly. I was fucking what is this shit you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean nice. it's a harsh harsh bit yeah. uh, uh, definitely so, so I was thinking it would be great if you could DM somebody during Prime Minister's question time right? <laughs> it, and it wouldn't be well you know we're politically uh, diametrically opposed but I can see that you've done a fair bit of research into <laughs> this and whilst you know your own party might agree on that I, I, I would beg to differ and I think that I, I certainly would. but you wouldn't get that just be sit down you wank <laughs> <laughs> half of them in PMQs I think they're on the phone just checking their horse racing Sir <laughs> <out. laughs> so Alex gave me a tip <laughs> but no I I I don't know that that I guess that one might feed off the other, but they're, 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 they're two very different things, and the, yeah. the parameters are different as well. What you can talk about and the use of language mm-hmm. mm. uh, is something that I was always conscious of on the radio, just because it was very different from what I did as a stand-up. And Absolutely. a lot of people mm. would come and see me that had maybe heard me on the radio and going, "Oh God, you're, you're not like you are on the radio," and they're going, "Well, mm. there's good reason for that." Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of doing your nightclub acting, exactly, and fucking yeah. morning show, and yeah. Jesus gone. And um, I, I don't know if you remember this. I was actually on your radio show once in BBC Scotland, and it was so it was funny because I I'd been asked on. I didn't know why I got asked, but it was like they were doing some sketch show before the Scottish referendum, and they wanted people to send in oh, submissions. Yeah. Uh-huh. So me and Eleanor Morton were on the sketch. I was like an open spot, and then but. I didn't know why he's on it because none of my sketches even get picked right. for the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know why. He, Mine did, and I don't yeah. get asked. You didn't yeah. get asked, what, So who was producing what you were doing? I can't even remember. It was but, probably a, a sort of in-house marketing I would, thing. Because well, well, Laura, Laura, Laura Marks, Marks, I think, actually. The, That's maybe, Charles's daughter. Charles's yeah. daughter yeah. was in there. She was running it, and it was That's me and right. her nail. So I don't know, but they just thought to promote it for some reason. But <laughs> yeah. I just mind being on it, and I just it was so like... 
rabbit in headlights. I think it was my yeah. first time ever doing any yeah. live broadcasting. I hope I wasn't a dick. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be the. You might not remember this. I used to be the. <laughs> you're, you're a dick to Steve, though. <laughs> <as well. laughs> I used to be the meet and greet for uh, your show and Kay Adams and oh, right. someone else, uh-huh. uh, Janice Forsyth. Right. So I would bring up the guests uh-huh. and put them into the studio and right. stuff like that. But, but I mean, they would come into the cubicle, as they called it, mm. rather than into the studio, did they? Or did you come into the studio? And uh, Rarely, no. Sometimes right. I would have to set them up if it was, like, a, uh-huh. you know, if it was down in London yeah. or something. But right. if you were there, i just right. let them wait outside. I'd love to see you trying to wrangle George Best. <laughs> 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 That's an unfair fight. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, the, usually the guests were all right and stuff, but did you yeah. ever have any... Any pricks, any prima any, donnas? Any Bee Gees situations? Uh, Vinny Jones. Really? He's oh, a complete prick. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Absolute belly. He always seems like such a nice man. I know, well. surprising, <laughs> isn't it? But the, the ones that, um, that the, the researchers were wary of, you know, just because... They, they would take their arrogance out and then but as soon as they come into the studio they would play the game you know they mm. Mr Nice Guy mm. Um, mm. but I remember somebody said oh he'd been really nasty to one of the girls oh really um, yep and uh, and then the press office said uh, after the show of oh, Vinny's uh, agreed to have a photo taken with Fred for publicity for the show mm, no. and is that right, right? <laughs> and you know there was two entrances and exits at the BBC there was one the main reception then there was another one in the old building mm. I just went out the old building door and fucked off <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure that sorted Vinny out yeah, yeah definitely. that would let him know <laughs> who's boss because <laughs> I mean when I was starting out as well like when you're on the radio there and it was like because you, you used to have like was it a guest host or you just, you'd always have like comic That's guests right. come in they, and stuff they introduced like a get uh, yeah a co-host aye yeah because that was always like a really good opportunity I always thought for, for comics and stuff yeah. and like like because I, I always remember like likes of Bradshaw and that going on who's yeah now obviously on the, all the time and stuff <laughs> like that and yeah. so it was a good opportunity like to like you gave to a lot of people I think like and like the circuit through that show uh-huh. as well eh? yeah because I remember uh, Laura Marks. Uh-huh. They used to run a, a gig at the stand, didn't Aye, they? The BBC right. introducing, presenting or something, something, or something like that. Yeah. Did you all do that? Yeah. yeah. Aye, yeah. I've done that a few times. times. Yeah. I, uh, I don't have a script with you from before show <laughs> but, business. But. However, I wondered if you remembered this. I, I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen, you, you don't come out this part. I heard that you. click. That lock just clicked. <laughs> 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 I did a gig. Fred, you, this you... is actually for Channel Four dispatches. <laughs> 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 gig that you were on. It's a new Maybe... show called Who's This Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Right. Six, maybe six years ago ish. It was on a Monday night in a place called Bag and Ailes in Partick. Oh my <laughs> god! Do you remember that? Of course Fucking I do. How, what's, your, what's your memory of that evening? Um, Right, there was a very arrogant. Uh, there was a potential. There was a potential for violence. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, it was like ten p.m. On, mo- on a Monday night. Yeah. Rachel Jackson organised it. Yeah, and I think you were doing it kind of as a favour to her. Yeah. And I remember. <laughs> oh. do you, I don't know how you remember, but you dealt with it very well. You came out looking good. But there was a table of big guys as well. I remember yeah. they're watching the football. It was like Man United were playing Spurs or something. Really? You're like, I could be at the fucking game right now. <laughs> and uh, they were just being horrible during the whole show, weren't they? Yeah. And then you had to go up. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, that someone like threatened you or something. That's right. There yeah. was a. Yeah, there was. I, I can't remember that he. But no, he did leave. You didn't do anything. No. No. Uh, yeah, I think someone sort of wrangled them out of the building yeah. eventually. But I remember That's you saying this is horrible thing. I mean, you just kind of think, why the fuck am I here? <laughs> I do remember you signing off saying, uh, "Thank you, I won't be back." <laughs> <laughs> did it ever? Did, it, did the gig continue? I doubt, for any length I doubt of time? there was a second gig. No, no. Um, no I, I remember it. you remarking that you'd been in show business for thirty years or whatever, and that's the first time you'd ever been threatened. A uh, free gig on a Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she offered me forty quid, and I said, "Just keep, keep." <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell! God. The um, you, you wow, saying... you must be the only person in the world that knows about that gig, apart from yeah. The, I the actually Jewish refused thing. to go on because I was meant to go on after you Where somehow. Are you? Christ! I must. I don't know why. Uh huh. But and I was like new enough that I was like I just I'm not I don't need to if right. this is too much for Fred with uh-huh, respect uh-huh. it's too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he bode well that being the first one of those gigs as well? Because usually what you do is you do the second gig that somebody's running and they oh, go you should have been here last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we shout straight out the gate. Uh, only had yeah. one person get threatened last <laughs> month. Good. You um, were saying as well before because obviously Fred you like you do a lot of corporates these days uh-huh. as well like. 
how do you like? But you said that you the first one you done. Oh yeah, it's quite eventful. So this was uh, it was I can't remember when it was, but it was a an industry thing in the Grosvenor House in London, and I got booked to do a, a fifteen minutes of stand up before the awards, and the awards were going to be presented by Carol Smiley, who was mm. doing the the lottery show at that time, uh-huh. and uh, I went down and I can't remember too much about it. But it was about a thousand people in the room, right? Wow. Wow. And uh, <laughs> the organizer, and it, these things always overrun, right? And I've I've never really been afraid of these gigs, right? And that's, if if they come your way, I mean, just treat it like a gig. Do your best material, you know. Get the gig over and done with. And would you write we'll, specific we'll, stuff if no, it's for a company no, or anything? No, I've done that. No. I just Seriously. feel like I've not got the appropriate act sometimes for these uh-huh. these yeah, venues. Yeah. You know, talk about yeah. shagging and all that. And <laughs> like <an> afternoon <laughs> dinner. <laughs> so. Uh, the schedule to you, you'll be on about uh, 9 45. Fred, uh, Carlos started at 10 o'clock, so it's overrunning. This gig. he comes over, he said, uh, could, you, could you do 12 minutes? Okay. <laughs> Aye, Don't bother, <laughs> it's fine, right? Same money, flown me down. You've put me up in the Grosvenor House Hotel in Park Lane. Aye, that's all right. And he comes back, he goes, It's really tight. He said, We need to get moving. Do you 10? <laughs> I'll do whatever you want, mate, because eight. Right? <laughs> I said, I think I can stretch to eight. And his, his final pitch was, Can you do six minutes? Oh, right? wow. This is a dream. Christ, this is unbelievable. It's, is like doing a, a, it's like doing a wee open spot. Yeah. I said, Look, I'll, I'll aim for six. I said, If it's going well, do you mind if I do eight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd, be great. that'd be great. But if it's not going well, come off at six. <laughs> <laughs> Mental. That is amazing. Isn't How it? did it go? It went fine. I did, did eight. You do eight? <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I, I mean, I probably didn't. It wasn't even. It was the first thing resembling a corporate. Event. It was like for some student or something in the Kirin <laughs> train. And I was today. I think I was today like 15, 20 minutes or something. Uh-huh. But no, that way you turn up and you score. It's a rabble. There's no way anyone can do anything here. Yeah, yeah. And Where's then, Sean Connery when I need him? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I needed somebody to say wish. But um but then they it was a similar thing. They came up and they eventually just went, I was meant to do that and then the raffle. Uh-huh. And they're like, Can you just do the raffle? And I was like, Oh no, that uh, that's fine, just whatever. Like, but and you just try and hide how delighted you are <laughs> yeah, yeah, and not yeah. having to just do your act and down yeah. your fucking arse, basically. Yeah. But but, it's the ones where they, they say uh, you know, they, they haggle over the fee and then they say all uh, oh, right then. Will you do forty-five minutes? And it's just like, don't be daft. No, don't give us forty-five minutes anywhere. Ah, exactly. Uh, especially at an event where people aren't interested. In yeah. To you. Would you think like the, the maximum amount of time you can do like half an hour probably? I will, even that. It's, it's long, it's long enough. I, I would say never do more than twenty-five. Twenty is optimum. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. And then, but you know, because that's I've done that a few times. Like the vast majority of thirty, and then it's like. I maybe do 20, 25, and it's going well, and I'm like, if I do any more, I'm uh-huh. going to lose them. Yeah. Or I start to lose them, I go, if I just finish yeah. now, yeah. I'll have, yeah. I've got away with it. And, but I would imagine, and nobody's ever said to me, but I'd imagine nobody ever pulls you up on doing less time, surely. No. No. Like, because like, nobody's going to thank you to do an extra 10 minutes and fucking stink your room out, do you know what I mean? No. Yeah. But, uh, when you're watching something, you never want it to be longer, do you? No. No, <laughs> no exactly. I say, the, the guy that used to run the comedy store, Kim Kinney, uh, and Kim's mantra was never more than 20. You know, mm. he would never do get people to do extended sets in the comedy store, you know, uh-huh. mm. um, 20 minutes maximum. And that was that was how the store worked for years and years. It Did, still does. Were they kind of just as tight about timing? Still, like, you couldn't Pretty, do any really under though either? Like, you need, you need to be kind of on the dot sort of I, thing? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, legendary stories of people, you know, booked to do five minutes and they do 12 and they're, they're never back in the place, Aye. you know. It's, they were brutal in that respect, but uh, yeah. Then jonglers was even worse for time. They, you, oh Christ! Oh really? Uh, you really had to hit your seven minutes or whatever yeah. it was. And, um, uh, I heard you talking about that, like doing when you're doing London stuff. So when you're going doing, doing the store and doing the warm up for have I news for you? Were you doing a lot of jonglers at that time as yeah, well? Yeah, was one. Was the one in Clapham? Did Did you? Clapham say was about? the main one. Was and it really? And they opened one up in uh, Camden. Aye. Um, Which is still there, or the the room still there? Yeah, I think, the room's in some still form. there. Yeah, it was a music venue before Jonglers took it over. Oh really? Called Dingwalls. Right. Um, and then they made had you feel it... at home, did it? Just the <laughs> <laughs> All right, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> who's in from? <laughs> who's in from Inverness? <laughs> uh, we did. Uh, I did about three years at Jonglers, and then the comedy store uh, uh, lifted their money up. 
uh, and I asked junglers to match it, and they said no. So I I canned it. Wow, <laughs> right. Well, Mercenary they, bastard. Was was junglers always like the, the sort of hen do's, stag do's kind of It was of a wee bit gigs. more like that, but I mean, the one in Clapham, I mean, in the 90s, it was, you know, very much yuppies. Uh-huh. Right. You know, it was the people that were working in the city and making a bob or two. Right, okay. Uh, Camden was much more spiky. Mm. And they, they used to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, you you know, you'd get a good run and mm. two shows on a Saturday. Right. So you'd be doing like five gigs over the weekend. So it was it was decent money, um, and but Camden was pretty pretty feisty. That there's some great stories about up there. Um, Bob Mills, do you know Bob? Big Bob Mills, I not know. personally, but yeah, yeah but uh-huh. he does. Uh, I think he still does fighting talk now and again and uh-huh. stuff like that. Mills, he was a legend, and um, he said, I think Sadowitz was booked, and Mills he was emceeing. And uh, Jerry got booed off and <laughs> went on. He said, "He said I've seen a lot of acts booed off in my time." He said, "But that's the first time I've joined in." Were <laughs> 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 nice. you ever booed off? Boo- I was hummed off, <laughs> hummed off in the Tunnel Club, uh, which was the. That sounds tunnel- like uh, quite an yeah. exciting experience. <laughs> 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 yeah, <it's extra. laughs> it was uh, it was Malcolm Hardy's club before right. he opened up the creek, and uh, I I got booked in to do it. It was a Sunday night, and uh, oh, it was awful, <laughs> dreadful. Uh, and the audience, they all because they they they're this collective consciousness that, and they all started humming right, just like you you're stink, so you're stinking the room out right, it's just right. humming. And uh, I'd, I'd done the comedy store. It was my first weekend at the comedy store. Aye. And that hadn't gone great anyway. Um, and I went to the tunnel club and they started humming. And I just said, all right, okay, you you win. Right, that's <laughs> all from me. And they're all going, oh, fuck, do you think you're going? Right, <laughs> get back on. And I'm going, no, I don't want money. I'm, I'm, I'm just not. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want me on here. I don't want to be here. Let's just... Let's just call it quits. Wow. So they were humming you off, but they still wanted you to stay in oh, I did. and oh, yeah, be I mean, hummed it, at? Oh, aye. It was, it was like, like a bullfight. Oh, that's you know, crazy. Audience wanted blood. See, when Sick. you had a weekend like that, because I've felt this way if I've been doing it on and then you kind of go back up the road and you just, do you ever just go out? Oh, you know, like, just no making it in this big city kind of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. is this t- did, you, did you find it tough? Like, like, did you find it tougher? Like gigging like in London and in England and, and doing like so, Scottish gigs. Well, after I mean, that weekend was pretty early on in my career. Aye. Uh, so I didn't go back for about eighteen months. Really. So I came back and then we'd do a lot of funny farm gigs and you know we'd have probably had another fringe Aye. run by that time as well. So you build up material. Yeah, totally. And in those days, I used to try and aim for an hour at the fringe, and out that hour, you would get twenty really tight minutes yeah. that you could work the circuit with yeah um because as you know i mean unless you're brilliant the hour that you do at the fringe is not the same kind of punchy quality as mm. you get away with them no you can't um, do like the other 40 minutes of that yeah, a fucking that, corporate that, or something yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 i would be using that uh this 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 bit is vital to padding out the routine <laughs> <laughs> No, therefore, and I because it must because so do you think like you got your chops just doing the the the, the fringe a lot every year and just yeah. just forcing yourself to do like a new hour and stuff yeah. like that then and doing just as many gigs as as you could you know because mm. uh, that's what we had to do going back to the funny farm so this was the funny farm so it'd be live gigs as well and you yeah 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 oh, it was I mean we did hundreds of live gigs before STV came along and uh, said we want to do this series. Uh, called and we're going to we want to call it the funny farm mm. and we said oh well so we we got a payment from them for the use of the name right and we used that to buy sound equipment right so mm-hmm. yeah because there was a lot of people that were in the funny farm that didn't get on the tv gig mm. so, so that would be like a pool of comedians and you'd be different yeah. lineups for different places because yeah. that's quite an old-fashioned thing i think that i've had my aunties and uncles saying like oh so these all go around together and gig and I'm, no, you just go to comedy clubs Aye. and you just get booked that way. But that must have been more frequent back then. That yeah, you would just go around together. Yeah, and Stu was the Stu was the main comp here. Right. So, uh, but she was a natural for. Yeah. 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 It, 
overruns quite a bit, yeah. didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you knew it was going that it was going well if he'd done twenty five, <laughs> called a break, <laughs> and then started again. <laughs> Sometimes about quarter to eleven, an act would get brought on. <laughs> the last time you only get a day six minutes. On again. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't a corporate it was a funny family <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant man well that's great I think that's probably about covers it I just, just done over the hour so thanks yeah. so much for, for joining us Fred yeah, yeah. cheers Fred I feel this has been like a uh, what was it like in the olden days <laughs> no, no, no 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 you're still out fucking giving it both barrels on the <laughs> on the circuit now aren't you and on yeah. tour and all this well aye I mean I, and I still love it but um, I'll be doing a lot less next year I think aye um, just trying after you get cancelled when you put it in a different time <laughs> as I used to say nothing terrifies a BBC producer more than Oh, it was different times. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, listen, well, Fred, thank well, you thank so much you for, yeah, for thank joining you so much. Much. Wish you all the best. Aye. Cheers. I mean, you're, the, you're the sort of torch carriers now. You got mothers. I don't know about that. But, no, I mean, but... I've, I've said this so many times, this year especially at the French, because I didn't do a show on my own. I was just kind of, uh, did some guest spots and a bit of improv. But, I mean, the, the accolades that were coming in for Scottish comics, you know, and that... Mm. The ripple effects will be further than you think, you know. I know people that came to see your show that you maybe don't know came to see your show. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, these things, it, it's all cumulative, right? Mm. It all adds up and it gathers pace. It's a snowball effect. Mm. Um, but I reckon Scottish comedy just now is where Irish was about 15 years ago, you know, with Tommy, mm. Dylan and Jason and all these people that came through. Mm. Uh, I think Scottish comedy is in... Very, very good fellow. No, I think, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I hope, think it's so it. strong. Amazing. Well, um, you know, for us, Fred, as long as you're not saying what you say the bag of nails and saying you'll not be back, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my agent said it'd be 40 quid. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you would say we can keep it. <laughs> yeah, we need it. We need all we can get. But yeah. Thanks for joining us, Fred. Uh, Thank for, you. Before Thank we go, you as ever, uh, just please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can follow us at SomeLapPod on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And send any questions you've got to our email address, which is somelapod at gmail. Com. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, Cheers. Fred. thanks, Fred. Cheers. That that was was great. Great. Thanks, Fred.